it's so hard for girls, like your self-esteem, I just feel like it's up and down. Like some days I wake up and I'm just like, yes, bitch. I'm like, my pussy is f***ing magic. <laughs> and then other days I wake up like, I can't believe anyone's ever f***ing me. <laughs> like Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Like, uh... Typically, when people think of body image, they think about things like weight and body size. But more than our physique, body image includes how we see all of our physical attributes. Struggling to feel good about what we see when we look in the mirror is something that we all wrestle with, and generally is much more than meets the eye. Like any relationship, the one we have with our bodies can be judgmental, lacking love and acceptance. It can be easy to pick ourselves apart about things like our weight, hair, facial features, muscle tone, or skin, just to name a few. No matter how hard we work at trying to fix ourselves, we still just might not feel good enough. And for many of us, the fixing and fixating can teeter on the obsessive. A desire to be physically attractive is totally normal. This actually stems from a primal drive to be appealing to others so we can establish relationships and secure a sense of belonging. However, when we do invest heavily into our appearance, it can actually be counterproductive to our sense of self-worth and our ability to connect to others. Literally staying on the surface can be easier because it's not as tender as the deeper and more complex emotional issues that we all struggle with. Since things like beliefs and feelings are so abstract, projecting those issues onto our physical selves gives us something we can tangibly fix. The problem here is we're really only scratching the surface and treating the symptom, not the issue. It's kind of like if you're driving your car and you hear it start to make a funny noise, you might just want to like turn the volume up a bit so you don't have to listen to it anymore and even think about what a cost of a repair like that might be. But inevitably, the problems can mount and become more extreme until you're eventually broken down in the middle of a highway. Okay, so there's a story about me and my brother when I was probably about 10 years old or so. And we'd gotten into a fight about something, can't remember what it was about, but what I do remember was the way that my brother retaliated was to draw these really specific pictures for me. And the pictures were of how we saw each of our bodies. And so the first picture was of him, and it was like this perfectly sculpted six pack. And the next picture was of me, and it was just like, it's kind of like big round O with like a little dot at the bottom for a belly button. And that was me. That was my belly. That's how he saw how I looked. And I remember that was the first time that I consciously was thinking that there was something wrong with me. And then like other deeper and more emotionally complex issues like growing up gay, things that I might not fully understand quite yet, this was something that I could and it was something that I could fix. And so I did. And so I started dieting and running and just exercising a lot in general. Eventually in later years started weight training and I did trim down. But no matter how slim I may have gotten, I would still look down at my stomach anytime I would sit down and see how many rolls there were. Or I'd like pinch my side and see if I could pinch an inch. And it wasn't until years later that I realized that my stomach had actually become a place that I could project a lot of my deeper issues around feelings of shame and inadequacy. When we grow up gay and are invalidated for who we are authentically, it can feel essential to perfect our outward appearance. We create smoke and mirrors so no one can see our true selves, hence one of the popular stereotypes of gay men being perfectly coiffed. But even after we come out, there can still be a lot of residual shame and fear that others will discover our dirty little secret of inadequacy. Therefore, that mask must remain. The problem is that when we do overwhelmingly invest into our appearance, it actually reinforces all of the shame that those obsessions stem from, and we're not truly healing the deeper emotional wounds. So what can we do? Take stock. Start paying attention to when you do notice a spike in body consciousness. Take note of what other issues may have come up recently in your life, and just start being curious about the connection. Open up. Share body image issues with friends and family. This will help you connect to others through your own vulnerability and create a larger dialogue around feelings of inadequacy. It will inherently work on a deeper level to break down shame and create a more positive self-image overall that will also be reflected back to you in the mirror. Make a conscious trade. Consciously decide to trade excessive work on your appearance for time and energy into passion projects, hobbies, and other authentic interests. Remind yourself that both are strategies attempting to achieve the same goal of seeing yourself in a more positive light. The latter just does it more effectively. 
We don't need to beat ourselves up every time we start to feel consumed by how we look and then judge ourselves as vain. Instead, we can use those moments as a barometer of emotional well-being and start practicing new ways of investing into ourselves that gives us the peace of mind that we're all looking for, that we are good enough and worthy of love and belonging.